Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. I am a co-founder of Wikibon.org, and I'm here with David Floyer, who is uh, one of my co-founders at Wikibon.org. He's the CTO of Wikibon, and um, this is theCUBE, uh, where we bring you the smartest people in the industry, we invite guests in, uh, CEOs, CIOs, analysts, uh, practitioners, and extract knowledge and share it with you. These are people that are, are, are oftentimes independent, as is our current guest, uh, Jason Buffington, who is with the Enterprise Strategy Group based in Milford, Massachusetts, is an independent analyst firm. Uh, uh, Jason follows the data protection marketplace and uh, is a real expert in that space. Uh, Jason, welcome back. Thank you so much. And uh, second time on theCUBE. And we're talking data protection. You know, it's an interesting marketplace. I was um, saying earlier, we had uh, BJ Jenkins on. Mm -hmm. And, we, and, and I said the same thing with Stephen Manley. When you look at things like purpose-built backup appliances and you look at you know, data deduplication and the effects that it's had on backup, it makes sense that it's going to replace tape and, and cannibalize that business. What surprised me is the, the pace at which it did that and this, the, the incremental market that it's taken on. It's much bigger than the tape market. Oh yeah. And uh, it's going up and to the right, tape markets flatten and decline, and uh, it's a pretty amazing dynamic. It caught me by surprise. It, in, uh, um, why is that? Not that it caught me by surprise. Why, why, <laughs> why is it, it working that way? <laughs> <laughs> it caught me by surprise, I'm a, I'm a crappy analyst. But, uh, what's the market dynamic that I missed? You know, uh, so, uh, so ESG recently did some research and, and some of the things that we saw, uh, first of all, for the first time in a couple of years, uh, improving backup is like the number one thing that folks are investing money in in 2012. Um, it's always in the top 10, but it bounced back to the top of the list. And, and if you think about what else is going on in IT, I think it makes a lot more sense. Um, it, uh, it tied with number one with uh, uh, increasing use of server virtualization. Uh, that's the good part, right? Server virtualization solves so many problems. The downside is VM sprawl makes backup so much harder. Right? Um, then you take in general makes backup. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Then uh, you've got unstructured data growth. That makes backup harder. Um, you've got private cloud architectures where uh, whole services and whole templates of machines come online. That makes backup harder because there's more to move on. All those things are, are talking about no matter how much, those are all growing the growth on production storage and whatever you're going in production storage, then you've got to have four to six X that in backup storage to make sure it's all protected. Which is where I think why Dedupe took over so fast. Um, because as that production storage kept growing, D if it wasn't for Dedupe, you wouldn't be able to back up everything that was growing in the production state. Jason, you were talking about VM sprawl, sort of pressuring backup. Mm -hmm. um, can we dig into that a little bit? So why is why does virtualization make backup such a headache for people? Sure. Um, for one thing, today with the commoditization of hypervisors, you know, it, it wasn't that long ago that there was one, I guess, what you call enterprise credible hypervisor. But today, um, uh, the hypervisors are more pervasive. It's not just enterprises, it's mid-market that's doing it. And the reality is it's just too darn easy to stand up a VM, right? It's about a half a dozen clicks and all of a sudden this new VM comes out of nowhere and starts grabbing footprints of storage. Um, now the I got to get me a server. Yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, I want a server. You know, the days of saying, well, oh, I want a server, that means I'm going to go ahead and uh, how much CPU and how much memory and how much hardware, and then I'm going to go and figure out what the vendor is, and then I wait four weeks, Thanks and then IT provisions yeah. it. No, instead it's like, oh yeah, yeah, we got, that. we got available resources, I'll click this much of this, change some dials, and hit go, and it's there, right? It's too darn easy to stand up a VM, and that's when you're doing one at a time, right? Now when you think about private cloud, when it's elastic and it's dynamic, now you've got this business owner who really you know, doesn't care what's running behind the scenes. He says, I want a new app. And when he clicks that new app button, all of a sudden there's three new VMs for the web front end, there's some middleware, there's two SQL backend servers on it, six new VMs stood up. How does the backup guy know how to go back that up? And he just clicked in a self-service board. So, so virtualization makes it so much harder just because it's so easy to stand up. And the challenge is, ironically, is, is that when you're using templates, most of that data is redundant, right? Every one of them's got a Windows OS or a Linux OS, and, and it's all stuff you don't need 80 copies of. And on, so. on top of that, you've actually used, utilized your servers much more efficiently, so the yeah. spare bandwidth you have for Yeah, talk that about that a little bit. Yeah. So you've got the simplicity factor. I thought, that, I thought simplicity was a good thing, which it is, but it just, sure. there's a ripple effect. There's no, no free lunch. Yep. And then David, you're saying that now, the, 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 my observation I'm, on that marketplace thing is that whereas before you were using spare resources yes. in the server to do that backup, yep. that, that ability has gone away. 
uh, is just no longer there. So you're actually having to put in real resources to do the. So backup. you have less physical resources now to do the backup. Backup right. is so one of those applications yeah. that is, does not underutilize servers. Right. Okay, so now right. you're saying that because you got less physical resources, when you go to do the backup. You, you need real resources. Not as much juice, yeah. not as much yeah. horsepower. Right. So that pressures backup windows. And, and in addition to that, there's an increasing number of snapshots that are being used yep. uh, in the environments. And those snapshots need to be backed up, mm -hmm. uh, put somewhere else, replicated somewhere else. So that, that constant supply of snapshots, replication, and real backup is putting a, 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 a huge amount of extra capability in the hand of operations, and a, a, a better RPOs and on RTOs, but at the same time using resources, mm -hmm. and, and using them be, because they're meeting the issues that people so have, what, so what, which what, is the, 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 the poor backup windows and the, exactly. uh, and, the, uh, and the poor recovery rates. Now I want to pile on to that though. You know, one thing you mentioned was is that it's putting all those extra burdens um, on operations but one of the things we're also seeing more and more of is, is that it's not just the IT operations guy who's focused on that anymore. Right. It's the database so the so the database yeah. administrator mm -hmm. says, I want to back up zone stuff. In fact, a yeah. great example of that during a BJ and Stevens uh, a keynote yeah, earlier today. Yeah. You know, the, the DBA wants to be able to own it himself. Yep. The virtualization person wants to own it themselves. Oh, absolutely. Um, and then there's also the the challenges where the the senior level execs. One of the things we saw in ISHI's most recent research is is that regardless of which group is choosing the backup and recovery technology, it's often the business owner, the stakeholders in the backside. They're actually paying. For for it, which means now they think they've earned visibility into how is the backup and recovery process going. So you have pressures on higher level visibility, you've got DBAs who want to back up themselves, you know, so you're losing control in many ways, or you're, you're um, raising liability and visibility, and you're losing control of the environment. There's a lot of things that just make backup harder today. So what happens, go ahead, Dave. Uh, I thought one of the most interesting things of uh, Steve's uh, keynote was the introduction of uh, the catalog, the introduction of the catalog as being the key piece that they're going towards. So mm -hmm. that you choose different ways of doing it, right. different products, different snapshot technologies appropriate to the different applications. But you bring that together with a catalog which is keeping track of the copies of snapshots, the copies of replication, where they are, and being able to know where the data domain copies are, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. it's a metadata repository so it's around? the metadata and the catalog that's going to become the center of importance of getting that right. Um, and then using the resources to, to, to dial the specific requirements of the application. It comes down to application specific. And that, uh, where's that IT. metadata reside? Does it sit in Flash? Or? Well, no, well, the, the metadata, some of that metadata better reside at the Flash level because you, when you need it, you're going to need that That's in quick. spades. Yeah. So yes, there's going to be active data metadata, sorry, it's, it's uh, archive data if you like, but it's, there's going to be an active component of that which you always will need to get hold of. So, so let's talk about so, how so, so, so backup's driving the need for Flash. That's, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's a scary a idea. A small amount. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about what that does for changing the role of the backup administrator, right? right? So, um, and and you know, some of the announcements we heard today were around, say, DD Boost and how it's actually enabling the Oracle DBA to be able to do his own backups. Right. That self-service well, thing. Pulling, it, pulling it back towards the application. Absolutely, and that's that, the yeah. right thing to do, right? Yeah. So, so the um, so from an evolutionary perspective, certainly backup to disk is faster and almost better in every way than backup sure. to tape. That's great, but it drives all the storage, and therefore you need DDoop. And and so then the question is, how smart can you get DDoop? And the closer you get the the, the, the discernment to the production workload, the better off you are. That's great. But, and, and then in the case of like our man, it doesn't even go through the, a networker or an Avmar server anymore, it just goes straight, straight to the data domain appliance. Yes. That's yeah. the good part. The bad part is that backup administrator, his job is still the responsibility of assuring is the company's data protected. Exactly. Yeah. And so the idea of actually being able to make sure that okay, the, the, the Oracle DBA gets to be able to do what he needs to do, which is assure that he can recover and assure the resilience of the application the data set, the backup guy still has to be able to say, am I meeting the SLAs that the company established? And so the idea of actually updating that catalog with that metadata, he actually becomes almost a, a data protection governance administrator, mm. not a backup admin right. anymore. And, and the nice thing on top of that was, if you have an architecture which will tell you that level of protection, right. uh, and you can measure it, then you can put 
risk against it and measure their Absolutely. risk. And I thought that again was the first time I had heard a clear enunciation of what's been in tape for a long time, sure. which is the uh, invulnerability architecture right. there. C yeah. Can you imagine what that conversation would have been like if they didn't have that feature? Yeah. Can you imagine if it'd be oh. like the, the, the backup <laughs> admin tells the Oracle guy, okay, here, you can start doing your backups, it's not my problem anymore. It's right. Right? That's no right. one's going to buy yeah. that because the yeah. first time that something goes bad or they can't get yep. their data back, they're going to go straight back to the backup admin and say, why weren't you making sure the DBA was doing his job too? Right. Right? This solves that. Yeah. So what are the skill sets of a, of a data protection governance administrator and how do they <laughs> compare to a backup administrator? <laughs> you know, the, the, the backup administrator is the guy who's still, who, who primarily thinks in terms of, Process. I need to put an agent on the box and I need to know where my tapes are, right? The data protection uh, management administrator, and I made that up so I'm not remembering it the right way, he's, like like, it. he's an enabler, right? He's not, a, he's not necessarily the doer. He's the enabler of he's, how that he's works. Set, he's the CTO setting the architecture. Absolutely. Providing yeah. services to the or the parts of the organization yes. that want self-service. Yes. Exactly. Not necessarily and at the end users, of, but at, the DBA. At the end of the and, day. And I think that's a yeah. scale, right? Yeah. So in some cases, what you may find is that person's still doing the whole job. In other cases, they've completely given it away, like to the Oracle DBA, and mm -hmm. he's and just responsible for governance. And then there's that middle ground, right, where he's the coach. Okay, let me give you those best practices to move you along the way. Another direction I think that same role is going to go is as, as, as folks start looking at, say, cloud-based backup as an additional tier, that same data protection management administrator, they're going to end up being the compliance officer for is that cloud provider well, providing, providing the SLAs that we require there. He ends up needing to be a negotiator as well. A lot of upside for a data protection, a data protection management administrator. I'm going to have to do that into a blog data protection management. With a strong dotted line to the uh, strong dotted line to the the chief security officer. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah data protection in a in a security context. Security context. Yeah. You know, obviously uh, yeah. linking linking to other parts of the the organization other than just sure, IT. Just By the way, that's minutes. a much better career path. We yeah. just had a couple minutes. I minute. wanted to bring it back to this. This is always astounds me. This is IDC data. I don't think ESG does market sizing. Not, not yet. Not anyway. like this. But um, so IDC did this market data. They do it every every year, every half a year, every quarter, whatever it is. The pie is amazing to me that EMC has so much of this market. Now, I guess it's not that surprising because you acquire data domain, it's the right. leader. But the fact that they've been able to sustain it now for a couple of years, even grow their share with companies like IBM and HP and Symantec and Quantum and Oracle you know, attacking them. Uh, do you guys think this is sustainable? Um, or is this going to just, are people going to slowly chip away at this? I, I think the model is sustainable. People want to have outsource the complexity of uh, backup and have an appliance. That's very, very clear. Um, the, the amount of deduplication that you will do in the back end through, through data domain, I think will come down a lot because you'll have the snapshot technologies, you'll have the, uh, the, the applications themselves, the Avamars doing a lot more of that. So there'll be a shrinkage of the amount of the opportunity, opportunity to, do, yeah. to do that. But right. the, the marketplace itself, and especially if EMC go through on their current strategy, uh, it, it's theirs to take and well, theirs to own. Do you agree with that? I do. I, I do think the secret sauce that makes that pie wedge so big, though, is DD Boost. Um, I, the, the, the fact that it's accelerating an ecosystem so that other backup players can can grow on that and leverage the, the data domain back end, I think that's the thing which continues to make that compelling. So just the attract that vision, you're saying, the attractiveness no. of that or the actual sales of that? Well, no, just, just the, the fact that whether you, uh, so what do they got right now? So they've got uh, the ba backup exec, they've got, uh, um, uh, they just announced Quest, yes. uh, net, uh, the yes. net back. I mean, so they've got all these different backup providers. So regardless of the of what you want to talk about for the how, DD Boost makes that back end um, fill into that blue pie. It's, it's, so it's, as long as as long as they're the, the leader end, yeah. from a um, from a so, from an accelerator to deduplication, I think that's what's going to fuel that back end. When other folks start creating those accelerators, I think it becomes more interesting to watch. Well, and, and I thought the way to, to to compete with this would have been the sort of vision of a time machine for the enterprise using snapshots, CDP, sort of a whole new vision of end to end that data is, protection. Yeah. Which, for instance, uh, Jim yeah. McNeil of Falcon Store has been on theCUBE, yeah. and he put that forth yeah. two years ago at, right. at VMware, mm -hmm. but now you got EMC talking to exactly 13,000 customers yes. about it, it's yes. the same vision. Yes. NetApp and have the similar vision. But once yeah. EMC's on that curve, the customer's going to go, oh, okay, that sounds pretty good, I'll wait, you know, maybe it'll yeah. take them six months, nine months, maybe it'll even take them a year, year and a yeah. half to get there. Mm -hmm. But if there's a roadmap there, customers trust EMC because they've got the great service, they're doing a lot of other good stuff with it, and so, you know, EMC's becoming, you know, that sort of trusted infrastructure partner. So, 
um, that that vision was exciting. You, you guys got excited about the uh, the keynote. Uh, I think some of the smaller players are challenged now. They got to they got to come up with a way to attack that pie, um, not by copying what EMC is doing, but by innovating and you know I, providing I, I, I think transformative gonna, services. I think they're going to find ways of putting the technology into specific environments. So in the same way Avamar has done very well with VMware, mm -hmm. There's, there are other products, Veeam, others, that do a very good job, yeah. and, and they, will, they can put in part of the solution. There'll be uh, uh, Oracle themselves may well come out with something for, for Oracle. I think it will be, and, and Microsoft is, uh, yep. is going to be a big uh, component there. Yeah, so it's, uh, there's a lot of players that can add, that can take from that pie and, and make money. dynamic, but I just, you yeah. know, it's been but impressive I, But I agree with you that EMC have got the driver's Now seat. that they've put that vision yeah. forth, I think it's, yeah. it's a lot harder for people to, I agree. to steal I it. Agree. That's a game changer yeah. and, and was an opportunity yeah. for others that I, yeah. quite frankly, I think the market missed. And yep. now you got EMC talking about it. And, yep. so, and they're yep. so good at execution. Yep. And even when they're not good at execution, they're so good at marketing that they can you know, close <laughs> the gap and they, until they can figure it out. So yep. it's, a, I, it's a real conundrum for the yeah. competition in my view. So yes. and, and if they own that uh, catalog, and, they own, and if they are smart enough to make that catalog uh, heterogeneous so that they can bring into that catalog other components yep. of it, then they're going to be really very well positioned in, in, in every aspect of uh, selling storage to uh, the, the this shared uh, infrastructure, this shared storage, which is going to be a combination of backup and archive uh, um, uh, and, and active data, all three of them together. Yep. Yeah. All right, Jason Buffington, you give me, I'm going to give you the last word. Any any stuff you're doing at ESG, any research you want to highlight, activities you got going on, predictions you want to make? Here? Sure. Uh, so follow J Buff, J B U F F. That's where you find all my tweets. You'll find out about it first. Um, as far as research goes, data protection modernization 2012 just came out. We took a long look at what are people doing for cloud, for dedupe, for, um, for how they're protecting their virtual environment differently than physical, and where snapshots and replication play into a larger data protection strategy. So it's been some great research to put out and the public report's almost out. Great. At Jay Buff, Jason Buffington from ESG, thanks very much for coming back in theCUBE. He's at DFloyer, I'm at DVellante. Thanks very much. It's thanks great to talk me. to you. Great, great job. To talk to you and, again. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Keep it right here. We're going to cover end to end. We'll be back. Uh, we got another couple of segments today. My co host, John Furrier, will be back. Keep it right here. Uh, EMC World Live 2012. This is theCUBE, siliconangle.tv. Keep it right there. <laughs>